crafty friends it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with another 10 cards 10 plus cards one kit video but this is a brand new like just released kit from scrapping for less they asked me if I wanted to give the kit a try so it's going on sale at midnight on June 17th 2017 so if you like the look of this kit I suggest stopping the video now and going over and seeing if they're still available because I predict that this is going to sell out really quickly it's an amazing kit especially for the price really really good value like I said this is from scrapping for less the flavor of the month the kit uh, the link will be down in the video description but they have a couple of different levels uh, with different prices ranging from $20 if you have the subscription to $35 if you have the subscription if it's a single time buying it's $25 to $40 but either way that is an exceptional price whether you're buying it as the single use price or subscribing so there's um, the full banana split kit is what I have and actually I'm going to be making a lot of these cards without even using the full kit. Most of my cards can be made with a double dip version but like I said I think that it's a great value no matter what level you go with. So um, basically even the lowest single scoop Sunday comes with four different collections of paper. It doesn't come with the little accessories that's part of the double dip so you get the little stack of papers and the envelope and the single scoop level and then if you move to the double dip then you get the little bits that come with it like those sequins and the stickers so you do get all four collections either way though which I really like because sometimes you don't want an entire paper pad I am pretty good about going through an entire paper pad you've probably seen those videos on my channel if you haven't you might want to check those out too because those are really fun but sometimes you just want a taste of like a collection you know you think part of it's cute but you don't need to make 20 something cards like I do with them so I think this kit's a really great option for being able to sort of sample and this kit as you can see has a pirates and mermaids theme so I can't even tell you how excited I was when I saw this kit. I like to donate a lot of my cards and there are links in the video descriptions with some resources about that. But I donate a lot of cards to kids. So Pirates and Mermaids is like perfect right up my alley. Some for the boys, some for the girls, something for everyone. I knew right away that I was going to get a ton of use out of this kit and be able to really send off most of those cards. You may have noticed towards the beginning there were some amazing stamps as part of this kit and the stamps as far as I understand the two large lawn fawns and the one small the um, so jelly which is the small jellyfish one are even just part of the single scoop Sunday which is a crazy deal and then the neat entangled one is part of the banana split large one and so the dye and the ink are also part of the larger but those core amazingly adorable lawn fawn sets are part of the um, even just the single scoop and I did already own the so jelly stamp set but the other ones I didn't so I thought it was a great value if you don't own those mermaids and those pirates yet and you've been thinking about getting them now is the time so you may have noticed I all of a sudden have a bunch of these colored up and I didn't want to talk about the coloring in the video because like I said I want to focus on showing you how you can make a bunch of cards with it instead of how to color because I think there's a lot of amazing colorists out there who can give you some tips but as you can see I chose to color a whole bunch of them and then I cut them out and I use my brother's scan and cut because it doesn't come with coordinating dies which you know makes sense and not everyone needs them or wants to pay that price for them so I chose though because there are so many um, like people stamps I chose to color them in a variety of ethnicities because I figure, you know, if I'm donating these cards, the children who are going to get them are going to be um, a variety of ethnicities as well. And so that way, hopefully, they can kind of match it up to the person receiving it. Or, um, I don't know, I just I thought that made more sense rather than just to color them all uh, one way. And I will have a coordinating blog post where I'll talk about some of the ways that I color these, like some of the color combinations that I use to get different skin tones and also some of the measurements that I use so that you can get the most out of your card kit. 
because I, I think you only get six papers in each one, which is enough to generally make five or six cards. So when I started with this, when I sat down to do the like 10 cards video, I decided, and I, I'm pretty sure there's more than 10 cards in here, I decided that I wasn't going to really focus on all the really awesome stuff you could do with those stamps because there's a lot of videos about those stamps already, they're popular stamp sets, but I wanted to show you instead how easy you can make cards with this kit. Because there are so many little goodies in it, you can really just churn out a bunch of cards without stopping and coloring an image each time. However, I do recommend doing what I did at the beginning where I colored a whole bunch of images at one time. And so that's something that you can do when you're not necessarily feeling very creative or you don't have a lot of time. You can just color a few images, have a little, you know, stack of them ready to be colored and then build that up over time so that when you do go down, when you do, you know, sit down and really have your creative time, you can just go for it and have those to pull as embellishments, kind of like when you pull these pre-made embellishments. I'm using a sentiment from the stamp sets. I liked that the stamp sets paired so well with all the little embellishments that went with it. This to me is a really coordinated kit and I've had some kits where sometimes I'm like I don't understand how the pieces go together but that was not a problem with this kit. All the pieces really went together. I really saw the cohesion and I'm going to use the you are awesome sentiment and I think I add the uh, matey as well to it. I thought that that was a fun general sentiment because the cards that I donate are supposed to be just encouraging cards. So what I'm going to do here is this paper included these little um, map die cuts and I wanted to, I thought, well, you know, since it's clearly a good spot for a sentiment, what if I just cut those three apart, stamp three sentiments, and then I'll be able to make three cards because I also know that I have three little embellishments that go with it. I have two pirates and then there's a pirate bird on a chest on one of the stickers. So I kind of like looked at the little bit of supplies that I got and I do think they vary a bit um, from pack to pack because you're going to get some of the stickers from a sheet. You're not going to get a whole sheet of stickers. So yours might be slightly different stickers, but the tip is to like look at what stickers you got and think, okay, well, I know the easy thing to do is use those two, those three big stickers if you have them, um, for example, like both pirates and, and the parrot. And by starting with a plan in mind, I thought it came out a little easier. And I decided to take three of the pattern papers from the same collection and I cut them to A2, just under A2 card size, so four by five and a quarter. And then I saw this yellow piece and I thought, well, that will really add a nice pop of color. So I cut that piece to three by three squares. And so now that I've done some prep work, I know I can whip together a couple of cards. They're going to be pretty similar, but they're all going to be a bit different because they're using different die cuts and or stickers. But that's okay for me because I don't need to make every card super unique. So I paired the girl pirate with the pink striped paper. I'm going to put the sentiment down and then glue all of that together. I thought before I taped anything down, what's a way that that pirate will still fit on the A2 size card? I didn't want her hanging off too much because then it will be difficult to fit it in an envelope. So I just sort of positioned everything before I glued it down. And I'm sure most of you do that, but I really encourage you to kind of just like play around, shift elements about a bit, you know, maybe switch out the papers. Like if you think she didn't really pair well with the pink, what other one you could use. My other tip when working with stickers like this would be um, start using the small stickers right away. I found that I always had a plan for the large stickers in the set. Like I knew I wanted to use this parrot here, but Oftentimes, I would make a few cards with the large stickers that came in a, in a you know sheet or something, and then I'd have all the small stickers left, and I wouldn't really know what to do with them because I didn't think they made sense for their own card, and I've learned to start using them right away, or going back and adding a few stickers. So, you know, if you've made a couple cards with the stickers, then go back to the sticker collection and start seeing where you could add a few extra littler stickers onto the cards. 
But here, like I know that I want to get most of these stickers used up right away. So I'm going to sort of play with it as I go. But the other way generally works pretty well too. On these stickers though, for me, I really was happy about the pirate thing because I think that that is really appealing to young kids. But there are a few things here and there that are a little too skull and crossbone uh, for my purposes because a lot of my cards go to cards for hospitalized kids. The skull and crossbones, not really ideal for that situation because a lot of them are sick and the reality is that some of them might pass away or they might have friends who passed away and so I just try to be a little bit more careful because again, you know, like there's obviously a skull and crossbone on this pirate's um, uh, hat here, but just trying to make sure that there's other stuff going on besides that on the card. Make sure that overall the card is still clearly very happy and that's another thing you have to consider if you ever do make Halloween cards to donate as well trying to make sure that they're more fun and less scary so just a random tip that's more relevant to uh, people who donate rather than just you know the average card maker who can you know go wild on all those little uh, I think they call them Jolly Rogers is what they in the pirate context is what you call that skull and crossbone flag but I just kind of put those to the side and said you know what, I'll use that on another project so there are my three quick pirate cards with the first collection, and this is what I have left from that collection. Definitely can still make at least one more card with that, but I'm just going to go through and make a few cards with each collection. There's also adorable sequins, and like they're not just sequins, they're like seed beads and sequins with every little pack if you get the double dip Sunday, I chose not to use them because again with donating cards they could become a choking hazard so i will create uh shaker cards in f the future for other purposes and those i can use those sequins on because like i said they are adorable so if you love shaker cards you're going to really enjoy these sequin mixes and again i can't tell you how great the value of this kit is like i would in a heartbeat pay 40 dollars for the contents of this kit because you're probably getting at least double that in value. You know how expensive even a little pack of sequins can be. With this second collection, I'm going to do something similar. I believe this is the Echo Park collection called Let's Be Mermaids. And I'm going to cut, I think, four papers to an, just under the A2 card size. And then I'm going to cut one paper to three by three squares. I'm kind of just going to like stick with that sort of measurement just because I want to use up a bunch of my kit and not overthink things. So if I kind of notice that three by three squares and A2 size card bases worked well together, I'm going to sort of stick with it, but try to add a little bit of variation. So here I'm going to start bringing in some stamps. I'm not going to only do stamps, but um, I did color them all up. So I noticed there's starfish paper. Well, why not use the starfish from So Jelly? And I'm going to stamp the sentiment directly onto the paper. As I stamp each sentiment, you might notice I'm going to use the um, VersaFine Onyx Black ink. That's my favorite sentiment ink because it comes up really dark, really crisp, almost always a perfect impression the first time. So you'll hear me say that a million times. That's the ink that I personally recommend, but not Copic safe. So you can't stamp other things in it. For Copic markers, I think think I tend to use the Simon Says Stamp Intense Black, but there's so many good black Copic inks out there. Here I chose to use the You're a Star sentiment. Another thing that made me so happy about this particular kit, and for me personally, I might not be relevant to everyone, but these were like perfect for encouragement cards because each stamp set, even that little tiny So Jelly, came with a great encouraging sentiment. You're a star. Like that's perfect. So um, moving on to using some of the stickers, I wanted to, again, just use the stickers right away because I find, like, I think, oh, the sticker's so cute, I'll hold on to it. But then they don't always get used. So I said, let me use those right away let me, with the pattern papers that they coordinate with because if I don't use all my pirates that I colored and stamped, that's going to be totally fine. I'm going to come up with a million more cards for them in the future. But these stickers, let me use with paper that already matches so that I don't wind up, like, stressing myself out later on thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I really need to find something that matches these. 
Here I'm using, I'm creating a little seam because again, I want to use those tiny stickers right away. I'm not going to hold on to that little starfish and only use the large turtle. I'm going to use those little ones and I'm going to try it out with a couple of different pattern paper backgrounds. So I knew I wanted to use the blue side of these three by three squares, but the background papers I can kind of switch out. And I believe these papers are double sided. So you can again, explore both sides, like turn it over to like the other side better and try to make it work. I'm using the waving hello sentiment for these cards and that is from the Lawn Fawn Mermaid set. So again, great general sentiments in the stamp sets, but also they do have sentiments for a variety of occasions. Um, the see you soon and we are mermaid for each other. And I like the pirate set especially because it has thanks, happy birthday, and general encouragement. So great for a lot of purposes. I think it would be a fun one for um, Father's Day or even Mother's Day because it says thanks for showing me the way. I think that's a good different sentiment. You don't have to buy a special Father's Day set. When you cut the A2 size cards from the 6x6 papers, you're left with these 2 by 6 inch strips. And so I thought, well, again, I kind of just want to like go for it and use up some stuff rather than holding on to these little scraps to find a purpose for later. Like if I'm going to go um, and, you know, really work with this kit, try to maximize things so I don't have a bunch left over. So I decided to take the strips and put them alongside the edge, usually on the left side, underneath these blue blocks that I'm creating with the stickers or with the stamps, etc., etc. I'm sorry for the fact that I wind up saying things like so and however, I, I don't know, like there's words that I kind of say as transition words a lot, but these videos are kind of long and when you talk for 35 minutes straight, you tend to trip on your words a bit. So sorry about that and forgive me. I'm going to glue down this strip and this is where I use that sticker. When I looked at the stickers, again, I looked at all of it before I got started with making a card. And I thought, you know, which of these stickers can I use? There was one sticker that said, I'd rather be a mermaid, I think. And you could definitely use that on a card, but it's a little bit of a different sentiment. Like it's not a traditional card sentiment. I think it would be like really cute on a scrapbook page with a kid in a pool or something. So I decided not to use that one and to shy away from it a bit just because I think if you're not, if you don't give a lot of cards, you probably stick to some more traditional sayings when um, giving cards. So I didn't want to throw off anybody who was distributing these cards for donating. Here I've run out of stickers because again, I said I wasn't going to use that particular mermaid one. So I'm going to go to the stamped images that I created and as you can see, it's so nice to just have a pile of them. Like I could sort through and my mermaids one, some had the little pink tops and some had purple tops and, you know, different skin tones. And I could basically pick from them kind of like picking stickers. And while it does take a lot of like front loading, a lot of time to set that up, it makes it so fun to craft with. And it's a great way to use little bits of time. You can color while watching TV or you can color while resting in the evening or spending some time with your family. So it's just a personal preference there. Moving on to the next collection. This is the Doodlebug uh, Under the Sea collection. I have a six by six paper pad tutorial. I've taken this entire paper pad and turned it into like 20 something cards. So I'm familiar with this collection and I love it. So if you're interested in more about this collection, be sure to check out that video. Here you only get six sheets, which again is like a good taste of the collection. So I wasn't unhappy with that because you do get a full paper pad across several collections, which is fun. And I am going to cut again four sheets down to that just under A2 size card. I think I made three cards with one collection, four cards with two collections, and another three cards, so that equals math 14 or so cards, but there's a lot of leftovers. I've used up a good majority of the pattern paper, but those stamp sets, those three amazing stamp sets that came as part of the kit, are good forever. 
this Doodlebug collection had these cut aparts where you can cut the um, like little squares of decorative paper into designs. And I don't know, that did not make sense, sorry. Um, they're like little scenes that are taking up squares and you can cut the squares apart and then use those. And so I try to take advantage of that. I'm again going to use the waving hello because it pairs really well with the sea creatures that are part of these cut aparts. I chose one piece of pattern paper and I believe it's the pattern paper that had the large mermaid design on the back because that makes for a really large card and I wanted to do more cards. So I cut that one into three by three squares again. And then these little squares, I think they're like one and a half by one and a half, but they might be two by two. Again, there'll be a coordinating blog post where you can get more information. So once you have like jumped over to scrapping for less, like speed over there now, trust me, this kit is going to sell out, um, and picked up this kit, you can, um, you know, try to see what some of the measurements were, if that's helpful to you, if that's something you're interested in. But I picked four of my favorite cut aparts and I mounted them on the three by three squares. I stamped the wave and hello because it worked really well with all of them. And then I'm going to kind of like cheat, but not really. Um, there's no cheating in card making, but I'm going to come up with like one design and then just use it to make four different cards. Like I'm not going to try to reinvent the wheel every time I make a card. There's a lot to be said for that. You know, my sister makes some like beautiful one-off cards all the time and then I feel like I make a lot simpler cards but I like make a lot more of them so it's just a style thing but like yeah those cards are really really cute too the double scoop dip or double dip sundae includes this ribbon as part of it and so I wanted to take advantage of that ribbon again trying to kind of go with that philosophy of let's use up most of this kit the first time through rather than saving some pieces as precious because a lot of times those will just sit in my stash for too long and I have a bunch of ribbon as you all know <laughs> so I'm going to use the ribbon to go right across that strip that two by six inch strip that was created by cutting apart the um, pattern paper into the A2 size card so just trying to, again, really put all of it right into a card, not save anything. And then there were these little tiny bit of um, under the sea sprinkles is what um, the Doodlebug calls their enamel stickers. They call them sprinkles. And I thought, well, again, let's just use these. Let's pair them up with the little cut aparts that I'm already using. The cut aparts had fish on them, so I can add an epoxy fish either over one of the existing fish on the design to give it a three dimensional look or to complement one, like add an extra fish to the scene. And so that's kind of what I'm doing here. I did, in retrospect, go back and think maybe these epoxy stickers aren't the best for my purposes just because they could be pulled off the card and become a choking hazard. So I think I'll probably go back and carefully remove those, but I wanted to show you that they do really add something to the card. Just kind of consider your audience. If you're giving the cards to small children, in, which essentially I am, it might not be ideal to put little tiny pieces like that on it. Those are hard stickers. They're not soft, they're not card stock. So it could be a choking hazard. But again, that's really more just a consideration that I personally have. And I'm going to assemble most of the other cards from this collection in the same way. Something that I think people kind of struggle with, and I mention this um, again and again on my channel, just because I do so many uh, paper pad and pattern paper cards. I know that pattern paper's kind of gone by the wayside a little bit, I feel like. Not all the like cool happening people are using it anymore, but I love pattern paper. And I think it can be intimidating because you're like, how do I mix patterns? Like, because you're probably looking at some of these pattern choices that I'm making right now and thinking like, oh my gosh, Jess, that is so busy. You're putting polka dots on seashells on top of starfish. Are you nuts? And the answer is like, kind of, but also that the people who design these pattern papers design them to look good together. Like you don't really have to overthink it. They're supposed to go well together. If you get overwhelmed and if you're not as bold as me um, in terms of choosing really busy patterns together, 
you can usually find some patterns in the collection that are a little bit more toned down to pair with the busier ones. However, again, they're meant to work together. Don't be scared. And if you're giving them to kids, kids will love that. They are not afraid of pattern and color the way we are. Have you seen kids' clothes or let kids dress themselves? They, they, they will enjoy it. But anyway, last collection. This is, again, so fun that like in one kit, I got to work with six different collections. I got to make some cards for boys, some cards for girls, some cards for anyone. Um, but here, they included some stickers in the Double Dip Sunday. You get uh, their, uh, Pirates Gem stickers, maybe? Not sure which one they are, what their official name is. However, they included glitter. And so they are really, really cute but I can't use glitter for donation cards because some of the kids will have um, breathing issues and the glitter really doesn't work well for them. So I'm gonna skip those, which would make a lot faster cards. So if you can use glitter stickers, go for it because you could really whip out some really nice cards with those adorable stickers, but it just doesn't work for me personally. So I'm gonna skip it. But I'm gonna, again, cut some A2 size cards and pair it with some three by three squares not going to reinvent the wheel. I'm going to use that way of going through it for the whole collection, just so that I can really get the most out of my kit and have fun crafting instead of like stressing out like we sometimes do about um, everything being special. But on this one, there's this little pirate on the pattern paper and I wanted to take advantage of that. So I couldn't work with a three by three square. Totally fine. Then I switched to what are my other scraps left over. One of the scraps left over with this collection was, again, those two by six inch strips. And so I'm going to stamp, or so I'm going to use one of those to create a banner, which kind of balances out the pirate. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but um, if you're going to have a interesting, like, large embellishment in one corner, you sometimes want to balance it out with your sentiment. And so that's what I'm trying to do here and with the bird. So I'm adding one like heavy attention getting piece, but I'm adding them on opposite uh, corners of the card. And so that's what I mean about like weight and balance that, you know, like think about like a teeter totter if you put two heavy things on each side. The other option is to put one heavy focal point in the center, which is more what I'm doing on these cards. It's not like smack dab in the center of the card, it's in the top center or the bottom center here, but sort of a similar idea. And as I create the scene around these little pirate girls, I think I keep them as pirate girls. I might switch them out. Not sure, but I think that I kept the, the girls because I liked how it tied in the red and also these um, papers with the pirate theme have a little bit of floral to them. So I thought they made good girl pirate cards, but again, no flowers or the gender of the little um, uh, image. They don't matter. You can, you know, send that just as much to a boy. But anyway, um, creating this little scene, and I'm going to again try to think about that idea of balance. If I just put all the images on one side and then leave the other side blank, it's going to feel like something's missing. So like right here with this little scene, I don't know if you can tell, but like to me, something's missing in that bottom right hand corner. So that's where my sentiment's going to go. I'm going to be thinking about that ahead of time. I'm going to balance the sentiment with the images. And with this stamp set, there's like these little, I guess, sand dune mountain things. And um, yeah, anyway, actually skip that. Sorry. Um, here I am at the, I have made all my cards, and this kit includes envelopes, which I tend to buy my envelopes in bulk, so that's not like to me the most important thing about a kit, them not having envelopes isn't a big deal to me, but since they did include envelopes, I thought I'd show you quickly how you can decorate envelopes in bunches. So like if you made a bunch of pirate cards, you can stamp a bunch of matching envelopes and kind of have them on hand for when you go to send the cards. A lot of times I won't stamp the envelope till I send the card and then it takes me a long time to send cards because I'm like stamping each envelope and decorating the inside of the cards and that's kind of silly because if it takes a really long time to send cards, I don't know about you, but then I'll send less cards. So if I'm going to send a card like to a family member or to a friend or whatever for swap, um, 
and I want to decorate the individual envelope really pretty, then, you know, it can slow down the process. Here I decided to do it in batches. Now, these particular cards, like I said, I'm probably going to donate them, and they don't need envelopes for donation, at least the place that I donate. So I'll use the decorative envelopes for other cards I make with the stamps or something like that. But I thought it would still be fun to stamp the insides. I always include a joke on the inside of the cards, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But if I'm, like, you know, just made, I think in this case, 14 cards, and they're all kind of coordinated, like they all have a pirate theme, well, then I could stamp fish on the inside of all of them. Then why not add that little extra touch? And so that's what I'm going to do here. Now, if you are stamping envelopes, quick tip, you want to use a waterproof ink. So if your ink is good with watercolors, then it's good to stamp an envelope. Because if you get any sort of rain on your envelope and you haven't used a waterproof ink, then it's going to smear your design. And if you're adding an address, of course, definitely make it waterproof because you don't want to wind up it not being able to get to your recipient. At this point, there were a few things that were included with the kit that I haven't even touched yet because it is such a awesomely huge kit. Like I haven't even used the neat and tangled stamp and honestly, not going to in this video. There's just going to be other stuff for other days and uh, more enjoyment of this kit later on. But in the largest banana split version of the kit, there is this Your Next Stamp yellow ink cube. And I'm a huge fan of ink cubes, so I wanted to give that a shot and just show you what the color was like so you could see if it was one that would be a nice addition to your collection. And so here, I'm going to choose to stamp some of the pirates in the yellow. I thought that kind of made sense because of the whole idea of like gold and pirates, because this is a very golden-y yellow. And I use that yellow paper that's pretty similar on the front. But as you notice, I have a scrap piece of paper here. And that's because I've stamped this pirate and the pirate chest in black before. And if you're going to stamp with a light color ink, you really want to make sure that your stamp is clean before you dip it in your yellow ink because you could transfer some of the ink onto your pad. Usually, especially with dye pads, you can, even if a little bit of black ink gets on your pad, it's going to be okay. You can usually wipe off the other ink or you'll be able to stamp through it and it won't really con contaminate the pad too much. But I prefer to just make sure my stamp is clean if I can. I'm not the cleanest stamper, but you know, I try and I try to keep that in mind. So here's the four envelopes, I think. Yep, the four envelopes that come with it. Obviously, I made a lot more cards than that, but it's totally fine. I have, you know, go buy envelopes in bulk. And I'm showing you really quickly all the different cards that I made. My kit is not used up. A lot of the pattern paper is, but those stamps are good forever. And the one last thing that I want to show you is what I do with the inside of the cards. So I'm going to uh, get to that in just a minute. I'm just again showing you like what's left from the kit, just so you can appreciate the, the value of it. But I like to put jokes on the inside of my cards. I'm going to donate them to Cards for Hospitalized Kids. Again, there's a link in the video description. That same link will take you to where you can print off jokes that will be perfect for pirate and mermaid cards. I made a specific, there's like a whole bunch of different categories there, but I'm going to add a brand new one that you can download and print that's going to be pirate jokes. There's going to be one for mermaids and one for pirates. And, um, they include a fun little, like, this says, I hope you enjoyed this joke. And there's a little mermaid joke. And it says, have a fantastic day. And I think I said something else for the pirates. Like, you are awesome or something. And I'm going to just sort of cut these apart. I can usually cut, like, three or four sheets in my guillotine cutter at one time. Oh, yeah, this is a matey. You are awesome. Those are the pirate ones. And so I'm going to cut them apart into little strips. And then I'm just going to very quickly adhere them. As you may have noticed throughout the video, I like to use the Scotch ATG gun. It's super quick, super strong. Place that in the center, sign my name, and my card is ready to go, ready to donate. And I've made a whole bunch of awesome cards really quickly with this amazing kit from Scrapping for Less. If you love this kit, I hope you paused the video and went and grabbed it before it sold out. And if not, hopefully you're getting inspiration for the kit that you purchased. And thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in more crafting tutorials, including 6x6 paper pad tutorials or card kit tutorials, 
be sure to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that. And also check out some of the links in the video description so you can get these pirate jokes to use for fun cards, for friends, families, donations, etc. And check out my other links, including my big picture classes, critter card class. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.